everyone. Welcome back to the MCM Buzz Stage here in London MCM Comic Con. And I'm very happy to welcome a very established season star of Small Stage. Please welcome John Noble. Thank you. Thank you. Great to It's be fantastic to have you back here at MCM. How has it been going so far? It's been wonderful. We've just, uh, well, only just started really, but I've uh, just done some signings and that was great to meet the people and uh, to be back here again. This is an amazing show, isn't it? It gets bigger every year. It does. And does that surprise you in terms of the veracity and scope of the fandom and how it's increasing for all sorts of genre shows and uh, paraphernalia? Was that a question? I'm sorry. I'm it was. Really <laughs> I'm looking forward to try and hear what you said. I heard all sorts of genre shows. What did you say before that? So it, does it surprise you how uh, how many fans there are and how it's increasing the fandom for genre shows? Well, well surprises me, no. I mean, it's a, it's a worldwide phenomenon, isn't it? They're the most uh, sought after and watched and uh, have the most devoted audiences of anything. Uh, so, I mean, I love the genre shows, I have to say, for that reason. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, what is the show that you get most recognised for? Ah, well, probably for... Probably for Fringe and Lord of the Rings, I'd say. Mm -hmm. uh, sort of equally. Surprisingly, Lord of the Rings after all these years. Yeah. But that's still there. And, uh, and Fringe, well, Walter Bishop was, uh, was so recognisable. So mm -hmm. that's the main one. And others too, you know. Yeah. They're the main ones. Well, you played Denethor in Lord of the Rings. And yeah. as you said, it was a while ago. But when you were shooting it, did you know that the movie was going to be such an epic hit? Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. We were filming down a little corner of New Zealand and you get the sense that this was pretty epic. But no one had any idea no. that it would become the greatest trilogy of all time, which it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, except that the standards were very high. Everyone sort of worked to a very high standards, so there was a sense that there was something special about it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things about your character is he's he's good in the sense that he's fighting against Sauron in the White City, but at the same time he's quite a cold character. So, did you you know did you think is he good or is he bad or a bit of a mix? Well, no, he he was. I, I suppose he, he he manifest as we saw him as a, as a sort of a, a dangerous and rather. Uh, uh, bad character if you like mm -hmm. but like anything he, he had his reasons for being what he was mm -hmm. and of course as an actor I don't think in terms of good and bad I think mm -hmm. in terms of playing what what his truth was and even though it was it was sort of uh, horrible to think that he would sacrifice his son and so forth when I look at the history of what brought him to that place to that form of insanity then I did understand him mm -hmm. he's a very complex character actually and yeah. um, but actually he um gave us a little bit of hilarity as well because he he was uh, having an epic moment talking about the white city about to be um, overrun essentially and then gets hit on the head by uh, Gandalf. Oh, no, <laughs> hit on the back. I think it was on the back, wasn't it? Uh, I, I remember that and, and he actually hit well, he, me too. Did he? Ian McKellen hit me. I said, <laughs> he said, oh, this will be all right. Bang, oh God. Yeah, he did. Was it fun to do that scene then? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's always good to work with. Uh, it's always work, good to work with great actors, and uh, yeah. Ian McKellen is one. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, the whole cast were, were fantastic, brilliant cast of actors. And you know, I, I worked mainly with Ian and uh, and uh, with uh, Pippin. Mm -hmm. I worked uh, with those guys and Dave Wenham. You know, wonderful actors. And the whole scene was uh, all of the scenes I got were very intense. You know, sort of burning scenes. But uh, really good actors, and that makes life a joy. Yeah, and Offset, do you have any particularly memorable moments from filming in New Zealand? M memorable moments mm. in that show of doing it? Oh, God, there were so many. There were so many difficult scenes. I mean, one of the, one of the best ones was, uh, was when I was being burnt on the, on the pyre. That, that was pretty tricky. And uh, I didn't actually do the run, as you can imagine, burning, but I went down to watch it. It's a really dangerous stunt. Uh -huh. And I, everyone was so nervous about it, you know. So I, w I, wasn't, I went to watch it and uh, oh, it was so exciting to see that. And we were so thrilled afterwards with, with, the, with the stunt guy that did it. So that was, that was special. There were many special moments there. Fantastic. Well, one of the other sort of hits that you've been in has been Sleepy Hollow. 
and uh, we have Tom Meissen yes. on our stage tomorrow. Yeah. And I was wondering, working with Tom, especially as he's the lead in the show, and that tends to set the atmosphere on set, how, how was it working on that show in terms of the atmosphere and behind the scenes? Well, well, well you know, uh, Tom Meissen and I really clicked right from the beginning. And I think it was probably because we, we have stage backgrounds, we understood each other, and we also understood each other's sense of humour because the Brits, the Brits and the Australians have similarities. So we got on, re we got on really well together. And uh, I've just actually seen him and give him, gave him a big hug just mm -hmm. a moment ago. Uh, Tom's a beautiful guy and a wonderful actor. So um, I, I wish I'd done more scenes with him uh, because when, when we did it, it was fantastic. Well, was it weird um, having that uh, scenes with him, but him being your father and you playing his son? Of course it was weird. <laughs> it was totally weird. And I got to play this sort of angry adolescent man who was this old fella who had all this angry adolescence going on against his parents, which is weird. Yeah. You know, like a 17-year-old, <laughs> really angry, well, vicious. But one of the things we, we see at the end for your character is that essentially he seems to really what he really wants is family even if it's an evil coven but he never really wants that with Ichabod why is that do you think he, he never he, he wa wants a family but he doesn't really want to include Ichabod in that it seems I don't know uh, he, he was such a I think he, he'd gone beyond wanting anything except revenge to be honest with you mm -hmm. and so uh, he, he got close to his mother towards the end uh, but no, he was, he was a very twisted character, a really twisted guy. Quite difficult in some ways to play that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it was, yeah, I suppose when I think about it, it was awfully complex, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Playing this angry 17-year-old. <laughs> yes, it was. I never thought about that before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it was uh, fun. And um, have you kept up to date with Sleepy Hollow? Not, uh, not a great deal. I, I do uh, have email correspondence with all of the cast members. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I've been doing another show in the meantime. Yeah, you have. And uh, so uh, I, I get the news occasionally via emails from people, and I know that they've just been picked up for a, another season. Yeah. And I know that Nicole won't be there next season. Yeah. That, that much I know. And what right. was your reaction to hearing that Abby had had died in the show? My reaction mm. was, oh my God! <laughs> I mean, seriously, I, I'm going to find out all the gossip sometime this weekend when I get. Tom and I will sit down somewhere yeah. and I'll say, well, what happened, what happened, what happened? And then you can tell and us. And then I can tell you. <laughs> and um, so we're going to take some fan questions in a moment. But, uh, so if you want to uh, think of your questions, stick your hands up and I'll come round to you. But before we do, the other show I wanted to ask you about that you're currently in is Elementary. Yeah. You've just been picked up for this season. Congratulations. So there are lots of iterations of the Sherlock Holmes story. Why do you think Elementary has done so well? The, well, the story's evergreen, as you know. I don't know, it's, it's, it's interesting that they've, they've, they've decided to place the story in contemporary, in contemporary New York. And uh, it's a terrific cast, you know. Uh, uh, Johnny, Johnny Lee and Lucy Liu and uh, Aidan Quinn uh, and, and the young man. Really strong cast. <laughs> and some very clever writers. <laughs> so it, it seems to work somehow or other. I don't know. And it was wonderful coming in and playing this character, this father, who'd been talked about for years, and everyone hated him, <laughs> and so he yeah. appeared, and uh, th that was kind of fun. Yeah. Well, he, he seems like he's trying to make amends now. In the end of the um, last season, he takes over Moriarty's evil organisation and says that it's to help save uh, Sherlock. But yeah. do you think that that's true, or do you think that he's going to end up being corrupted by the power that he's given? I don't know, that's in the hands of the storytellers, really. Um, I, 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 think there's, I think there's something that there's a point to be made that there he is trying to establish the father-son relationship. As, as difficult as it is, and I do believe that he did what he did to protect his son, I actually believe that. Yeah. But uh, who knows where it goes from there. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. would you like to see happen? Hmm? What would you like to see happen? Well, I, I don't know, I mean... The, 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 the Moran character, anyone that knows the show, he's got his own grief. I mean, he's, he's had his, uh, he, his life hasn't been very good. His woman has been killed by these people. Yeah. I think he also wants revenge. 
I don't know, he's up against some pretty heady characters though, isn't he? Mm. I mean, the, these guys. He is. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he'll get killed as well. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, that was always, a, that that. was always the toss-up, whether, yeah. whether he'd get killed or, or not at the end of the season. I didn't know till right at the end what was going to happen to him. So he's still alive. He is. Uh, okay, so shall we take some questions from the crowd, if you want to stick your hands up for me? Hi there. Um, I just wanted to find out, what was the best moment for you when you played in Fringe? Like, what, um, what season or what episode do you think was the best moment for you? Gee whiz, there were uh, so many wonderful moments on Fringe. Uh, my, my favourite episodes were uh, an episode called Peter in season two, where, where my character crossed over to get the other boy. There's another, another beautiful episode called The White Tulip, which was really powerful. Uh, there were, there were mo so many moments in other episodes as well. I mean, there is a, a moment uh, in the finale between Josh Jackson and myself, which is priceless, to, 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 where he says, uh, you're my very favorite thing. So many special moments. Also, uh, incredible moments individually with uh, Jessica Nicole and, and with uh, Anna Torv. Just priceless moments. And I, remem I remember them with affection and uh, Oh, golly, makes me tear up thinking of something. Oh, oh please don't cry. <laughs> Question? Hi, in Sleepy Hollow, how would you have written Henry? I mean, if he was going on for a few more seasons. I'm getting, um, can, can you, it's, sorry, it's, it's. So, in Sleepy Hollow, yeah. how would you have written your character, Henry, if he was going to continue for further seasons? How, how would I see him? Yeah, how would you write him? If he was still there? Well, I don't know what you'd, I don't know what you'd do with him. He'd, he'd sort of uh, gone as far as he could. I, I would have liked to have seen him have uh, more, more uh, interaction with Tom, with Tom's character, and I would have liked to have seen him develop that strange relationship. Uh, I think there was, there was gold to be made there because Tom, Tom and I worked so very well together. That would be what I think should have happened and could have happened. Okay, next question. Hi, um, in Fringe, obviously you can't think of Walter's lab without the cow. Did that cause more hassle than it was worth working with the animal or did you bond with it? Did I bond with the cows? Certainly. I loved those cows. It, was, it wasn't only one cow because we, we, worked in, we worked in different states and different countries actually. But they were beautiful. I, I, I don't really did have a relationship with them. I can tell you, I don't know why it was. I remember once in the first season, they, the producers rang me and said, oh, well, you've got to milk the cow, we'll have to teach you. I said, no, no, I'll milk a cow, I'm a country boy, which I was. That was great fun. Yeah. Well, thank you. Next question. Hi, uh, I'd like to know, um, what was it like working with uh, Leonard Nimoy on Fringe? Priceless. I it was it a was. Price, priceless. I, I, it's the sort of thing you think will never happen. And when the, when the, uh, the time came, they said that, that Leonard Nimoy was there, I was amazed, frankly. Uh, working with him was as good, as, as good an experience as I've had, to be honest. He was a, 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 a true gentleman, seriously. And we, we became friends, actually, um, during the course of that. Oh, I don't know, it's, it's one of those experiences you can't really, you don't even think it'll happen, and then it happens, and it's, it's gold. So that's my memory of Leonard Nimoy. Yeah, thanks. Next question. If you could choose anything you would want to appear, what would it be? Any TV or movie? If you, could, if you could go back in time and choose anything you want. Any character? Any so character, yeah. Oh my gosh. If I could go back in time and choose any character, what the hell? Maybe Doctor Who, I think. Yeah, probably. Uh, just because he's so extraordinarily legendary and very, very cool. <laughs> that would be fun to do that. Let's leave it at that one. Last question. Last question. Uh, hi, John. As a father, can you relate to John Bishop? Would you have done the same for your children if it would have happened to one of yours? As, as a father, can I relate to... Sorry. Can you relate to uh, Walter Bishop? To what, love? Can you relate to Bishop? Would you have done the same for your children? Oh, yes. Oh, God, yes. 
I mean, uh, I played a lot of father-son stuff, and it's really complex gear. And I am, I am a, also a father of sons. It's remarkable what, what a parent will do for a child. Remarkable, truly remarkable. Uh, there's no other relationship like it, even though it's sometimes very troubled. At the end of the day, uh, I think a father will do anything for his children, anything. Well, that's fantastic. And those are great answers. And I hope you guys have enjoyed having John Noble here. I have. So please give a round of applause to Thank our you. guest, John Noble. Thanks, guys. Love and stay see. tuned because we have Andrew Lee Potts coming right up. Keep my name. 